The DJI Avata 2 is capable of capturing some really nice cinematic footage, and I'm going to tell you the best rates that you can use when using the DJI FPV3 controller in manual mode to help you get that really nice cinematic footage. In my opinion, out of the box, the rates that come with this radio are a little bit slow and sluggish, and it makes the drone feel heavy and less responsive. But by using the rates that I'm going to give you in this video, your drone is going to feel more responsive, more agile, and you're going to be able to fly with greater precision. So if you're new around here, my name is Justin. If you've been here before, Let's get into it. So what are rates and what do they do and how can we change them on the DJI FPV3 controller? Well, to change the rates, we need to go into the settings, then go to control, then click remote controller and scroll across until we see gain and expo tuning. Now I'm gonna cover what each of these things do and then I'm gonna tell you my settings that I recommend for the best video possible. To also make this easier for you to copy my settings, I've created a little PDF sheet with all the settings on there that you can download completely for free in the description. So download that, it's gonna make it much easier for you to just copy those rates without having to keep coming back and pause this video. Right, so let me give you a little bit of a comparison. So here's me trying to fly the Avata 2 with the stock rates on this controller, trying to hit a nice gap. So as you can see from that video, I didn't have as much control over the drone as I feel like I needed, so I had to bail out of that maneuver. I then changed the settings, fine-tuned them to these settings here, and I tried the same move again, and this was the result. So there you go, from that you can see that tuning your rates and having proper control and feel over your drone really just transforms how you're able to fly because it gives you so much more confident that you can actually manipulate and put the drone exactly where you want it. But let's take a look at each of these settings and talk about what they all mean. The first thing we have is center stick sensitivity. This basically relates to how sensitive to input the drone is gonna be to inputs very close to the center section of the stick. So very close to where you first start to move on the stick. Now, if you have a lower value here, the drone is gonna feel less responsive in the center of the stick. If you have a higher value here, the drone is gonna react more quickly to movements in the center region of the stick. So if you feel like as soon as you start to move the controller, it's moving too quickly, you're gonna to wanna to lower that center stick sensitivity. And if you feel like you have to move the stick a really long way to start to get the drone to move how you want it, you wanna increase that center stick sensitivity. The next one we have is we have the maximum rate. Now this is basically the maximum speed that the drone is gonna move in that axis measured in degrees per second. So if we take the roll axis for instance, at stock it comes set to 450 degrees a second. This means if you move the stick to the maximum deflection, the drone is gonna roll at 450 degrees per second. And it's gonna to continue to roll at that speed until you release the stick. This is exactly the same for the pitch stick. So if you move it to its full extent in the stock setting, it's gonna move at 450 degrees a second. And it's gonna keep rotating at that speed until you let go of it. Now what you wanna do here is you wanna try and fine tune these sticks so that the drone feels nice to you. Now I'm gonna give you the settings that I use. And these can be used as a good benchmark. For me, these work really nicely. And I'm gonna tell you why I prefer these as opposed to the stock settings. So for my rates on the roll, I have the center stick sensitivity to 150. And I actually have this set to exactly the same for all of my controls. The roll is 150, the pitch is 150, and the yaw is also set to 150. I like to have a really nice, consistent, similar feel around the center stick. This is because when flying nice and cinematic, this is the area that you're most flying in. You're not really cranking the stick all the way to its maximum deflections. You really only do this if you're doing some like freestyling or an emergency where you need to get out of the way of something. So on that same note, let's talk about the maximum rate that I have set for each of my different functions. So for the roll axis, I have cranked this up from 450 all the way up to 600. When I was doing hard rolls with the Avata 2 to avoid things, it wasn't quite snappy enough. So I cranked it up to 600, and then I also left the Expo the same. I left the Expo the same across the board because I felt the Expo felt actually quite nice. And what Expo basically means is it smooths out the movement on the stick. So if you think of an exponential curve like this, think of your stick movement matches the curve. So if you move the stick a little bit, the reaction from the drone is only gonna be a little bit. But if you move the stick further and further out, as you keep pushing it further out, the reaction is gonna be more and more and more the further out that you push the stick. So it's an exponential curve of travel and the same reacts on the drone. But to keep it simple, just leave the Expo the same. I feel like the Expo is set really nicely on the Avata too. So I cranked up the roll rates to make it a bit more snappy. And if I wanted to do some nice snap S, uh, split S maneuvers, it's gonna make that a bit easier. 
So moving on to the pitch axis, I brought the center stick sensitivity down from 180. It was a little bit too touchy for my liking. And like I said, I want them all to match. So 150 was perfect for this. And then again, I also increased the maximum rate up from 450 up to 550. I didn't need it to be quite as quick as the roll rate, but I still wanted it to be quicker than it already was. It wasn't quite snappy enough in my opinion. Expo stayed the same. Lastly, the one that I made the most changes to was actually the yaw control. I think the yaw felt absolutely horrible out of the box. It was not responsive enough and it just felt like I had to move the stick way further than I wanted to to get the yaw response that I needed. And what this does, apart from falling flowers from the sky, is it means that if you have to move the stick further, you're more prone to have a throttle change as well as a yaw change. If you don't, if you only have to move the yaw stick a little bit, you're less likely to also get some unwanted throttle inputs as well. So this is why I believe that the yaw input should match the roll input, if not, be a little bit more responsive. So like I'd said before, I set the yaw input exactly the same at the center stick. So 150 on the yaw axis, and then I increased the max rate from 320 all the way up to 600. Yet again, I want it to be more snappy when I'm trying to avoid things. The yaw was just way too slow out of the box and the expo, I left the same. Something else I need to mention is I think the reason the yaw rate is set so low out of the box is to help mitigate the yaw tumble issue that we saw in the Avata 1. So if you have a slower yaw rate, the aircraft can't yaw as fast therefore it's not gonna be as susceptible to the yaw tumble. So if you're concerned about experiencing the yaw tumble, you can leave the max rate set as it is, but you can still increase the center stick sensitivity to give you a bit more control towards the center of that stick. So those are the best rates to use on the DJI FBV3 controller in manual mode when flying the DJI Avata 2. Now that's gonna give you the most control, the best cinematic video, and if you wanna learn more about the DJI Avata 2, check out my full review right here. And if you wanna see how this camera performs in low light environments, a little sneak peek, it does very well. Check out this video here in the stunning rice fields here in Bali. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.